There have been 18 large-scale attempts, and counting, to prove the supersymmetry model. The amount of money spent on the projects over the last several decades was about $19 billion. Only the latest project, the LHC as part of CERN, came to a total of $10 billion. And counting, after all this investment, careful calculation, and promises by physicists, do you know what the life-changing findings were for supersymmetry? Absolutely nothing. But nothing at all? Like, zero? Sure, this money also takes into consideration other things that were discovered when using the structures like particle colliders. But there's a big underlying problem here. Why would we continue investing in a theory that has proven to be useless over and over again? I mean, I'm not exaggerating when I say that there has been no tangible proof whatsoever. Nothing. The theory of supersymmetry supposedly fills the gaps of the standard model. It looks to find partner particles called superparticles for each standard model particle. And it's absolutely crucial to prove for theories like string theory. And worse still is that some physicists are pushing for even bigger particle colliders to be built since our calculations were wrong before. So I'd like to talk about how these projects, which have yielded zero results, survive, and about a problem which is polluting modern physics, sales and romanticism. The truth is that it's really hard for scientific advancements to happen. I think you're quite right. Even if we take Nobel Prizes into consideration, most of them are not that fantastic. I don't want to belittle any Nobel Prize winners. Of course, what they do is important and beneficial. But it's often not as grandiose as we think. Yeah, some people will discover things, sometimes. Science is quite unfair. So considering this extremely competitive environment, how do scientists survive? They need to sell. A lot of times, the things they study are not very interesting because they are very specific. Which it has to be, I understand. In research, that's the way it works. But they need to make it interesting for the world. Because if they don't, they won't sell it and get funded, in other words. The scientists of today that succeed, or that you often see given interviews on YouTube, are not necessarily those with the most potential or talent. That is, they are not the people most likely to get the greatest discoveries, but they are the best sellers. This is true for all areas of the world. The better you are at selling, the better you will be at propagating yourself and your product. Science is the same. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please give it a like. Nowadays, the best asset you can have in academia is attention. Attention brings fame, money, sponsors, everything. All you need to do is to be a great seller for your science. Unfortunately, that also means that your product doesn't have to be 100% legit. It's much harder to actually discover something than to sell the possibility of discovering it. I've seen names like the theory of everything or the God equation which sell a lot more headlines than a rapidly time-varying equatorial jet in Jupiter's deep interior. You know, it's not because these people are lazy or evil. Nowadays, it's really difficult to be a physicist. And that's because we have discovered so much, and it is becoming increasingly difficult to find further concrete evidence for new theories. Take Michio Kaku, for example. Honestly, I'm not a very big fan of the guy, and it's not because his name is really hard to pronounce. He's one of the founders of string theory, which is supposed to answer the many important questions of modern physics. But why do people adore him and love listening to him? Because he speaks like a romantic. I don't want to give you the impression that he's full of but why does he have so much success on social media? Conferences, so much attention. It's not because he discovered something great in science. It is because he describes the world beautifully. He's a very good public speaker and a good seller. And it works really, really well, but it doesn't mean that he's legitimate. So I remember watching a video where the interviewer asks him to describe the dimensions beyond the fourth and how come they're real. His answer was, Let me tell you a story. When I was a child growing up in San Francisco area, I used to visit a Japanese tea garden. He doesn't actually come around to answering the question. It's truly beautiful what he's saying, but where's the scientific back into this? That's one of the biggest problems of modern theories like string theory. They don't have any experiments to back the claim. Supersymmetry, by the way, which we started this video with, is required by string theory. But again, there has been zero evidence. 
But these people are supposed to be really reliable, no? We have this idea that physicists are extremely rational, but actually they are not. They are human beings. So they have a lot of emotions, bias, just like everyone else. One time I read a book by Sabine Hossenfelder, Lost in Math, where she wrote that some string theorists often argue for a loosening of the scientific method because of an absence of alternative explanations that the use of mathematics has worked before and the discovery of unexpected connections. But in agreement with her and the other physicists, abandoning this, at least in the way that is being proposed, will blur the lines between mathematics, physics and pure philosophy, essentially dreaming up scenarios. The problem with string theory is that every single prediction the theory made failed. So far it is a failed theory. But how has it survived? Because those who propel it are very good salesmen. I know that string theory can turn out to be true in the end, but the problem is that we need more than it's the best we've got. It needs to be actually true. Einstein said a phrase I like a lot. When he was invited to be the president of Israel, he declined because politics is for the present, but an equation is for eternity. Selling headlines is great, but let's not sacrifice the holiest thing in science, rationality. If you like this video, check out this one. See you there.